Welcome back. So yesterday was not a great day for me. Uh, not only did I lose the Rifter, I, expect, I expected to lose the Rifter, but I also lost my Wolf, which I was not expecting. And after some reflection on what went wrong, I realized that my build was not as good as I thought. I uh, don't have a good response, or I didn't have a good response, to the Battlecruiser um, Tesseros. And basically it was rushing in close range and trying to outslug them, and it was working up until the point it didn't, and I lost my wolf. And so I thought, well, maybe I could switch to artillery, get some range, and uh, beat them that way. And uh, it wasn't working, I'm not used to artillery, uh, so it's it's I could see it working when I get more skill at piloting that way. And then I thought, well, maybe I just need to give my autocannons better range, and that way I can stay out of the danger of the battlecruisers. And, um, and uh, I also looked at my uh, love of uh, inertia. And um, the inertia modifier was along the lines of helping me get as close as possible point blank so that I could unleash my autocannons at optimal. And so instead of extending the range of my autocannons, I was using inertia modifier to bring myself in close. So I've, I've mixed up the fit a bit here. Um, I have now added in a tracking enhancer. I took out the two um, uh, nanofiber, and um, that allowed me to drop in uh, in addition, and also the uh, assault damage control, and that allowed me to drop in not only the tracking enhancer, also a shield power relay, so that my shield regenerates faster, and uh, that required me to add a little bit more CPU. The uh, the nice thing about it all is that my total cost at 55 million is still in the same ballpark, so um, I'm pretty happy with this fit so far. Um, and also, my falloff range is much further. Oh, there's some nice loot. So um, I'm hoping that in this run, uh, revisiting the T1 uh, gamma, uh, calm gamma abyssals, uh, that I will be able to run into a battle cruiser and kind of show how this works. Um, it's not perfect, but it is better. Also, uh, I am in the works uh, applying some of the same principles to the Rifter. One thing that uh, surprised me in playing with Fitz today is that the Rifter gets a better falloff range than the Wolf does. So in terms of being able to deal damage you know, from safety, uh, the Rifter might actually perform you know, as well or, or even, maybe even better uh, than the wolf. So um, that's something to look forward to uh, in the coming days. So first room cleared pretty fast. On to the next. Uh, I've also been looking at ways to bling fit the wolf and uh, I could by upgrading to faction modules uh, get to having two of the shield power relays it would push my regeneration up even further um, and that that may be a coming thing uh, particularly as I try to move up into doing uh, T2's solo So coming in at a uh, wider orbit, swapping into tighter orbit, and killing the micro warp drive. To help bring into a tight orbit. And again, the big challenge with these battleships is they just take time to kill. <laughs> Oh, one other change I want to highlight. Um, I am now using a small projectile, Ambit Extension 1, 
instead of the uh, nozzle joints. Uh, basically, basically moving away from the inertia modifier altogether to uh, really double down on that, that fall off range. So um, if I were just doing this on my own, I would probably just patiently wait for this to happen. Um, instead, um, I will spare you a bit of time by overheating. Oh, it repaired. Yeah, the thing that surprised me yesterday was was not that I lost the rifter, but actually how much damage I did before I lost it. Um, for a while in there, it was really it was really holding its own, and um, perhaps if I had been more patient and more trusting on its ability to chip away at range, that um, well, I, I would have done better anyway. Um, I was just sort of resigned myself to death and uh, trying out a few things, and, and that's, you know, a big part of EVE. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Look at all those missiles. Well, that's cool. And it's gone. Let's see if we can get the explosion here. So the downside of overheating is that uh, if I get another one of those in the next room, I've, I've kind of used up my trick. <laughs> So the battle cruisers in particular, um, basically they don't do damage all that well past 10 kilometers, and um, they pretty much don't do much of anything at 15, but neither do I. And so, um, you know, having having just you know auto cannons are great because the fall off range is more of a concept than um, an absolute. So uh, you know, you you can reach out and and you know tag things from from a distance. Um, then, if we had unlimited time, I could just hang out and be sure to victory. Unfortunately, under these conditions, where there is a limited amount of time, uh, 20 minutes in the uh, in the abyssal space before you get potted, uh, I'm. Uh, is still a little more stressful. There, there's still a challenge to it. And uh, one thing I, I'm looking at is that uh, I can spend up to nine minutes um, if I'm being super cautious just on one battle cruiser. And um, that means that if I encounter two of them, that's that's the end of it. So no battle cruiser to show you today. Um, We'll clear this out pretty quick and see what lube we get. Uh, but I wanted to let you know the changes to the fitting, and uh, I'll be posting uh, the fitting in the description if you haven't seen that already. Another thing that, thing that I've been thinking about, if I go bling uh, for the fitting, I can raise the cost of the ship from 55 million ISK to well over 400. Um, it gets expensive. But I do end up picking up, on occasion, uh, Gravids, uh, the, the ability to, um, not the, the red ones, but the green, uh, 
<laughs> gambling objects <laughs> to see if I can uh, reduce the amount of CPU that other modules take. And so um, as I get more into, um, well, I've been doing a lot of runs, but uh, as I get more of them, uh, I may take the opportunity to try applying them and see if I can uh, just squeeze in you know, a little more CPU so that I can double up on the power relays uh, without, without breaking the bank. way too far <laughs> but yeah so that was uh, I started firing at about 16 kilometers and I I hit it so I'm I'm definitely enjoying this uh, this more I I think if I run missions with it um, I'm not really sure how it will go I, I kind of got into a habit of uh, every time I would get hit adding more uh, nanofiber or something that would increase my uh, my inertia so that I could just, you know, increase my angular, uh, was my angular velocity, angular velocity to, uh, to the NPCs and they would never hit me. Um, now, uh, now I'm taking a different approach and, and, and maybe I, I went too far. I, I had this journey when I was first starting with a fire tail and my skills were not all that great where um, I really depended very highly on the low signature radius for survival. And um, and it makes me wonder if in, in chasing all that, I never I never rolled things back. I never checked to see if it was still still necessary. So uh, I might give this a try on a mission. Um, if I do run a, a level four mission with it, I'll, I'll probably throw a, a recording on it. But um, I don't really consider level four missions uh, to be a challenge for a wolf. So, so far on this run, uh, we're at just under eight million. We're coming up on the last one here. Oh, 1.4, not counting the uh, the blueprint. So, so not a bad run. Um, thank you all for joining, and uh, I look forward to your comments. And uh, stay tuned for some more playing with the Rifter Fit, likely tomorrow. <laughs>